Hello, everyone. I've been doing some uh, sharing some information about Quant, the operating system for the quantum financial system with my web audience. So I thought I'd make a YouTube video talking about it. Let's go into the white paper. So this is what's really important. What you have to know about Quant is it's adopting other technologies. What other technologies? Uh, state of the art technologies, interledger protocol. We know who developed that, uh, Stefan, Stefan Thomas, Evan Schwartz, Ripple. Then we also have um, something that's really important to understand is also Cosmos, the interchain. So we have the overledger, we have the interchain, and the interledger, basically at the core of the new financial system. Now, something else that's really important to get is with Quorium, these two people that are on the team, Michael Zukowski, Carl Hula, are helping Sologenics adopt what? Cosmos Interchain, Tendermint. So who is uh, Michael Zukowski? Well, Michael Zukowski was head of Ripple X till April, 2021. He also founder and CEO of Logos Network, which is helping US dollar become more compatible with uh, Ripple. I'll show you guys a video next. Uh, he also worked at Blackstone Investment Group in 2013. Something important to know about Blackstone's group is CEO dismisses Bitcoin saying it's not going to own any. Also, Trump met frequently with Blackstone a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Do your own research. Michael Zakowski. I'm going to show you guys a video about what uh, Logos Network is. And we're going to watch a video from uh, Michael Zakowski. And uh, then I'll leave you guys with some more videos. Everybody have an awesome day. Peace. Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me live at Market Site, we have Michael Zakowski. He's the founder and CEO of Logos Network. We are going to look at the future of money and whether it is digital or not. One of my favorite subjects on Trade Talks. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for at the Market Site, your first time here. Welcome. Thank you. All right, let's talk about that. Do you think the future of money is going to be digital? So I definitely think the future of money is digital, and in many ways it already is digital uh, with many of our payments today occurring electronically. And you know, I think as we move into the future, that trend's just gonna, going to continue. And in particular, we're going to be increasingly moving to digital mobile payments. This has already happened in places like China, to a lesser extent in the West, but as more and more of our life moves onto our phones, so too will the payments. What will this look like, though? Is physical money just going to disappear? Credit cards, cash, is it just going to go away? So I think a big change that's occurring beneath the scene, not really impacting the experience of the end user, is the shift from a lot of these legacy systems with a lot of intermediaries that are very inefficient mm -hmm. to more streamlined systems. And as that occurs, that coincides with a general push by governments and regulators in many parts of the world to phase out cash and other physical payments. And so the increasing efficiency of digital payments where you don't have as much of a pain to end users as well as encouragement by regulators, I think, means that physical payments days are largely numbered. I would think that the developing world is adopting it quicker because it doesn't have the legacy infrastructure. And so you're looking at different regulatory agencies and governments and so forth. They're so intertwined into our more um, developed financial systems, if you will. But big news this morning, JP Morgan, they are looking to get into the digital asset space with a pretty big announcement. Yeah, so really exciting out of them. You know, we got to look into it and see what details fall out, but mm -hmm. it looks like they're looking to settle a bunch of their wholesale B2B payments on a blockchain type product. And JP Morgan, obviously, with Jamin Dimon, has been famously skeptical in the past of the technology. But I think these incumbents are increasingly realizing that they need to embrace this technology or be at risk of being left behind in the new payments paradigm. Right. Well, and you bring up a great point there that Jamie Dimon has been very outspoken about it. But this doesn't sound like a cryptocurrency to me. It sounds as if it's more the technology behind the blockchain, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, as far as I know, that's what it seems mm -hmm. to be. So they seem to be taking a bit of a baby step here. Right. You know, a lot of the great potential can be in places like the developing world and in areas like B2C transactions where the system is particularly inefficient. They're 
taking a bit of a baby step here. And it's very interesting to see the dynamic play between blockchain versus cryptocurrencies. There's a lot to be said for an open public network, like what we're working on in terms of how it can empower users around the world and cut costs out of the system. How do you think um, developed nations like the US, for example, consumers that are already used to the kind of financial system that we have in place, do you think we'll have a hard time acclimating to it? So I think where we're increasingly moving and where we shouldn't be moving is in the direction where a lot of the underlying technology is abstracted for the end user. Mm -hmm. Just right now, if I go to Dwayne Reed and I'm the average person, I probably don't really know how Visa or MasterCard is processing my transaction. It just happens to work. I think there will be some changes, though. Uh, the biggest will be a change from a pull-based system that we see today, see today where anyone who can scan your credit card or has your credit card numbers can pull a transaction on your account to a push-based one that you would see in a WeChat or Alipay in China, but we're less familiar with here in the West, um, where you have to scan a QR code, for example, and then approve the transaction. So that's a bit of a shift, but it greatly increases the security of those transactions and benefits the end users. And I think beyond that, most of the changes are really going to occur beyond the scenes mm -hmm. and uh, be abstracted from the consumer. So to, to help understand it a little bit better, if I transfer money from my PayPal to your PayPal, is that like the digital or what future money will look like where it's seamless without any hard currency changing place? Yeah, I think that's largely the type of experience that uh -huh. we look to see. Things like Alipay, uh, WeChat Pay, Venmo, PayPal, are precedents for where we're moving. I think one of the major changes that something like blockchain can provide is when you're transacting PayPal or WeChat Pay, you're in that ecosystem. You can't transact without peop uh, to, with people outside that ecosystem. What blockchain can do and cryptocurrencies is completely open that up, remove trust from the system. Now anyone anywhere around the world can safely and securely store and transact money with one another without having to trust anyone yeah. in the system. I mean, it makes total sense to me. I don't think I've written out a check and it's gotta be at least five years. And look how convenient it is even to pay rent or you and I to transact money um, with each other. But let's talk about Logos Network. Tell us more about the company and the solutions that you're looking to provide. So Logos is a decentralized payment network that's designed for real world use. And so what that means is our goal is to bridge the gap between the potential of blockchain and cryptocurrency in an area like payments and delivering an actual usable product that solves a real need for consumers while they don't have to worry about, well, how does this technology work for me? Mm -hmm. And what we've seen with Bitcoin and most of the other existing blockchain solutions out there is that they're not only slow, they're expensive, they're limited in capacity, but in many cases, there's a disconnect. No one really in the real world wants to transact in Bitcoin. They want to transact in US dollars or right. currency. Right. So what we're doing is solving those key technological and practical issues at Logos, where you can get the performance and uh, speed of a centralized network while delivering massive cost savings to the end user, all while transacting in US dollars. Right, because there's always that issue of scalability. We hear that all the time when it comes to digital asset um, adoption. How are we going to break down that barrier? So as you identified there, that's the key issue right now, and it's at the heart of what we do. The fundamental way we deal with scalability is by paralyzing transactions in the system. So an example, this is how it's actually done right now. If you and I both have the same bank, that bank doesn't wait for your transaction to finish being processed before it starts working on mine. It is done in parallel. But that's actually how blockchain right now processes transactions. Each batch occurs one after another, forming the chain of blocks. And that's the major bottleneck in the technology right now, causes all these issues. We were able to parallelize that in a few different ways. We have a non-blockchain data structure that allows one dimension of parallelism and then a technology called sharding that can open up some more parallelism. And the end result, you need to be very careful with the math and uh, what's behind these new features in the network. But we get much higher performance than Bitcoin and other networks mm -hmm. with the same levels of security and perhaps even more. All right, and to wrap up here, how many more years do you think until we're, we're a digital society when it comes to our money? I think it's going to be a gradual process here, but I think in the, you know, certainly within the next decade, cash transactions are going to be very scarce. We've already seen a lot of... Oh, well, I hope so. I yes. never have cash on me. It's a total pain. It's expensive for uh, merchants to use, and the existing technology is coming down the pipeline to make it more cost-effective and easier to use for the end user. All right, that's good news. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us at MarketSite. And thank you for joining me throughout the day. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.
Michael Zakowski, I'm the founder and CEO of Logos Network, which I launched over a year ago, back in December of 2017. Before launching Logos, I worked for several years at a large multi-billion quantitative hedge fund uh, where I traded everything from equities to mortgages to equity volatility. And before working in quant finance, I went to Harvard where I got a master's and bachelor's in math and statistics and also spent a lot of time on computer science and economics. And really when I was at school was when I first got into Bitcoin back in late 2010, early 2011. It's grabbed my attention and been an obsession of mine ever since. And a fun fact, I recently started flying, pursuing getting a private pilot's license. So as a student in professional and financial markets, you very quickly get a sense of how rare of an opportunity crypto really is, something that's once every few decades, if not less frequently. And what's truly amazed me about crypto and what captivated me was the transformed potential, massively more so than any other industry or any, any other pursuits. It's really changed the world at its core. And the ideas behind Logos have been percolating for 18 months, two years before we launched the company formally, and it made sense in terms of timing in terms of interest, uh, infrastructure in the space, as well as a lot of the technologies that we're using in Logos were drawn from developments and improvements since the launch of Bitcoin. Payments is one of the most high friction and least efficient parts of modern society, and that's a combination of inefficient technology, having to make multiple systems integrate and work together, and just the fact that you have a ton of intermediaries sitting in between any transaction. The end result is something that you see businesses paying 2% or more of their gross revenue in transaction fees. This is a problem that blockchain is perfectly suited for, and Logos really aims to be the optimal solution for payments and transfer of value, which ultimately boils down to getting everyone to agree that values move from account A to account B. Logos is designed from the ground up to do that in the most efficient way possible. The payment system is very unfriendly for merchants when it comes to accepting transactions. The typical B2C transaction, for example, often involves four or more parties, two banks, the card network, a merchant acquirer, etc. And all those people are taking a cut, so it ends up being massively expensive for these merchants. The reason why something like Square and Stripe is so appealing to many merchants is not because it cuts down on those fees, but because it makes it more convenient. Instead of having to sign up with multiple accounts, it makes it one streamlined process. The amazing thing about blockchain and something like Logos is we're able to cut out those intermediaries, reduce those fees, and still deliver that streamlined peer-to-peer -peer experience that merchants really desire. The vast majority of fraud in the credit card and debit card system occurs because it's a pull-based system. Anyone who gets your credit card number or bank account info can pull funds from that account by pretending to be you. Crypto is fundamentally a push-based system where you need a cryptographic signature for which only the end user knows the key. That can't be forged, it can't be duplicated, and money can never be unintentionally pulled from your account if you're using the technology correctly. And according to the latest Federal Reserve statistics, that could cut down on over 80% of all fraud that exists in credit card and debit card markets, which accounts to tens of billions of dollars per year. You know, if I had to choose another company to be CEO of, the, the obvious answer is Amazon. It's kind of inserted itself into every aspect of my life, but it's you know, one company where you can point to where it's had a direct improvement in my actual quality of life in meaningful ways. Can't beat free two-day delivery. Um, plus they have their hands in a lot of really interesting pies from cloud computing to supply chain to delivery and ultimately payments as well. And uh, so I would go with Amazon. Uh, the part I'm most excited about is the vision for it. Um, maybe that sounds a little bit boring, but I don't think there's another wallet, another dashboard out there that's really meant to be the interface to your tokens across all chains. Um, you know, right now, even many cross-chain, you know, wallets only allow you to interact with one chain at a time. And you sort of have to change 
you know, change the mode, right? Shift, shift phases, change modes, interact with your tokens on a different chain. And I've always thought that was pretty clunky. So sort of the ability to view all your assets at once, interact with all your assets at once, um, you know, irrespective of what chain they're on, is the most exciting part for me. Where they understand I'm flying from a different route. Pose as a human being. Mother Moon tells me that people need my help. I guess these are the cars she threw out and dealt. She said I gotta do it alone. She said I gotta do it alone. I guess I gotta go. You gotta do it alone. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch.